Welcome in MetaFam. I have a must watch video for you today. Trust me, you're going to want to watch this if you're holding MMTLP or anything that has now changed over to a QSIP number and all the changes that's happened of MMTLP. Uh, it could be different ticker symbol now, QSIP number, so holding your account. This here is very important information about the gray market and things you can expect uh, here in the next time period coming up. So uh, this here was William P. Farron on YouTube here, and he interviewed Ham Short Killer. That's right. This is the guy here that had John Berta on his uh, call, and John Berta and Ham Short Killer are good friends. And this guy, as you can see here, he exposed naked short sellers, period. A lot of fun at parties. Always pays for breakfast, cheap dinners, always on the run from the check. That's my move. But uh, yeah, this guy here is like top notch when it comes to exposing naked short sellers. And that's what he's here to do. And he was on William P. Farron's uh, YouTube channel. And thank you here to MMAT Believer on Twitter for capturing this part of the live stream. And it's a three-part video. We're going to watch it here in today's video. So uh, go ahead and smash thumbs up. Drop a comment down below. Here we go. Let's get to it. So did you hear that? Wrong on that. So next question. <laughs> Someone asked me about MMAT and MT, MMTLP. Yep. They want to know. They want to know how quickly and whether that's. Roger wants to know, is that going to be a bellwether for other squeezes? All right, I'll go right into it. The MMTLP, I was an expert in liquidating big preferreds in the gray market. I did it with Goldman. I did it with everyone. It's basically, I would call them up, tell them I have 100,000 know, floor and preferred D. I have to sell or preferred C, I forget what it was. <laughs> and they would make me, a, they would make me an offer. You know, they, they they would bid me for what I wanted to sell. I, I go, I have a hundred for sale. What do you want to pay? They go twenty seven. I would say sold, and that, that's the gray market. And then we would write out the the completion of the both sides of the trade. In MMTLP, they have to settle the trades. I don't know what day it's going to be, but they do it in the gray market. They have to settle a trade. You can hear Ham Short Killer used to do this for like Goldman Sachs and other people that has these transactions and they have to be closed out because this is going private. Cannot be a short position going to a private company and brokerages are responsible for getting its next bridge shares. But if the AST is full and they cannot transfer legit shares to the AST, they have to close out these positions because they owe us one legit share of next bridge per MMTLP or the QSIP number that you have in your account. They owe us that. And the only reason I think that <clears throat> it's interesting, I think it breaks apart the momentum on a short squeeze because everyone's going to have to negotiate individually for their price. For example, E-Trade may call you up and say, you know, hey, John, you know, you know, John I have, I'll buy you a thousand shares from you at $8 a share. And you say, well, I want to sell it higher. They go, I have a bid at $8. Do you care? And you'll say yes or no. If you say no, you got to wait for them to come back again. They may come back in an hour. They may come back in a week and say, hey, you know what? I'll pay you 12 I'll pay you 20 I don't know. But they have to close out their positions. So each individual, if I own it at 5 and they call me up and say, you want me to sell it at 8 and I've been concerned that my money's locked up, They'll get me to sell it because, you know, I want my money out. So that's the only thing that's not fair because they're using it against you. And you really have no decision to make. I mean, your decision is be, will be by yourself. So that's it. Okay, so this first clip here is very important to go ahead right now and get a game plan set up because you heard it right there. If your brokerage starts calling you up and wants to know, will you accept eight? Will you accept nine? And they may even say, what's your counter? Like, what, what are you looking to get? And they're going to try to negotiate. You need to have a game plan ready. They know if you have a lot of capital tied up in this and you need cash, they may want to lowball you on this. Now, I got my number set and they don't give it to me. I'm just going to say, then give me my next bridge and I want those registered to the AST. So 
that's what I'm going to do. But we got two more clips here to keep watching. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be like, if it goes gray market, guys, it's going to be individual calls up to you. And you're not going to get to see if a short squeeze goes, you watch that baby rise up and you can sell out. You're going to have to wait for phone calls in order for this to happen. So there is a little bit of downside to this with the gray market, but you will get to hear the offers. They may ask you for a counter offer, but have a game plan ready. This is why it's huge. It's not fair because they usually they get There we go. So yeah, this is huge of why you need a game plan, man. You got to have your price target set. They may come in a thousand shares. For nine bucks, say, nope, I want a hundred. And they say, well, we'll give you 15. No, I want a hundred. I'm not going less than that. Because you got to keep in mind, it's going to be tax, guys. It's going to be taxes. So keep that in mind, too. When you're taking an offer, you're going to be taxed. If you get next spread shares and it gets bought out, bought out by another oil company and you get the oil company stock, tax free event. So keep in mind, taxes, too. When you are making, when you're accepting an offer or negotiating an offer with your brokerage firm, like I said, everyone's financial situation is different. So make the offer that's best for you. You set your price. Let's go to part two. Against you, and you it's not fair because they use it against you, and you really have no decision to make. I mean, your decision is be will be by yourself. So that's if it goes to the gray market. They may open it up for trading, which would be the right thing to do. And let the shorts cover in the marketplace. And just remember one thing. The longs have done nothing wrong. The shorts have done everything wrong. This is going to help every stock that's being naked shorted. Because... And keep in mind, he made a very good point there. We did nothing wrong. The long, we're longs, guys. We bought MMTLP. They owe us a share of NextBridge. The brokers owe you that. And they owe you to get that registered to the AST. They owe you that. We did nothing wrong. If the broker sold us synthetics, they have to make it right. Keep that in mind, too. We did nothing wrong. They did everything wrong. So I want them to give me my price. The shorts is locked into the stock just like the longs. And the SEC and FINRA have no choice but to follow the sell tickets back to see who's been doing it. So if you're the naked short, and that, and that stock, and you have 50 other stocks that you think is shorting, you know the SEC is coming into your headquarters, and the crooks don't want anybody to see what else they're doing. So that's a great thing that they're going to find out, and it's going to lead back to the crooks. They can stumble and mumble all they want. Oh, we thought we borrowed it, we did this, we did that. But the SEC is not stupid. They know they were naked short selling. And if they, if they say, let me see your records and these other names that we see you in now, that's going to unwind this whole thing, and it's fantastic for all the stocks. So Tom, I think that, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Tom McCartney's asking, what if you turn down your the first price offer? What happens then? you got to hope they come back and say, if they offered you nine, hopefully they come back and offer you 12. Right. I do believe they're going to have to bid it up. But each person has a different opinion about what they want to get out at. And I think they're going to hold that. that that's going to be the hard part because you're playing. You're just in the dark on the whole stuff. You have no, you have no idea what they're doing. Do they have to buy them all back? They have, to, they have to close out the position. The company's going away. Pretty huge comments right there from Ham Short Killer. Um, they have to close out everything. They have to. So the weak ones will sell first. The people that has their price set, that's going to be the tough ones to get. Because if AST is full, <laughs> I mean, they have to pay the price that is asked. I mean, you know, we did nothing wrong. That's all I can say. We did nothing wrong. They have to pay. They may come to you and say, well, what for you? we'll buy a thousand shares from you at nine. And you say no. They come back and say, we'll buy a thousand shares from you at six. Yeah. And create the illusion that it's going down. You don't know. It's completely, it's a black box if they do it. I don't know if they're going to do it, but to me, they should open it up for trade. All right, there's a key point he made too. Let's say the first call you get, they call and say, we'll buy a thousand shares at $9. And you say, no, I don't want that. They hang up, they call you back an hour later. Well, now we can only offer you $6 for a thousand share. And they're creating the illusion that the price is going down. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, 
They still have to provide you your legit shares in NextBridge. And there's no way. I didn't sell at 12. They can come back and offer me all they want. I am not selling anywhere near that price. Isn't happening. I want what I originally wanted. I want my NextBridge shares. And I believe NextBridge to be valued somewhere between, the. honestly, I believe it's the 50 to $85. I believe it's somewhere in there. $50 to $85. And that's on a tax-free event. So if I'm going to accept an offer, I'm going to have capital gains tax on that. So I got to take that in mind. I don't want to go no less than like triple digits. I, I don't want to go no less than triple digits. And that's me being realistic. Uh, I always said my goal is I wanted to pay my house off, pay my cars off, you know, get that kind of debt out of there. And if I can get that out of here at certain prices, uh, I'll be pretty happy with that. Of course, I have a little cash left over. We got to have cash back for Uncle Sam and taxes as well. You know, that's going to be whatever, 25 to 35% on taxes, somewhere in that range. So yeah, I got to make sure I have enough to do what I want to do. And if I can get that done, I'll be uh, pretty happy overall. I said, if you know, you've been following me since I've been doing this since day one, that was my overall goal with buying MMTLP is to get the house paid off, get the cars paid off, get out of debt and, uh, just get what I rightly, and if they don't give me that price, and I'm saying I want my next, I want next bridge, and I want to get registered to the AST. So that if they don't give me what I want, I want registered to AST because then I want to get the stock and collect dividends and use dividends to pay down my debt. That's then that's my goal. So, all right, we got another clip here, part three. Let's go to that one. You don't know. It's completely. It's a black box if they do it. I don't know if they're going to do it. But to me, they should open it up for trading. That's that's the right thing to do. So, you know, but they do close out positions in the gray market. I've seen it done before. So there's a guy named Arca that does videos. Apparently, he's predicting GTII goes to $17 in the next few weeks. Do you well, want to... Let me finish with the MMTLP. Okay, all right. Okay. So I introduced John Berger to West Christian... Share Intel and Upstream. So MM, was it MMAT? I forgot the second MMAT. MMAT. Yeah, MMAT. They're in good hands. They know what's going on. They they have a blueprint of what to do. So, you know, John's a great guy. As a matter of fact, John, uh, I spoke with John and he bought uh, 15,000 or 20,000 GTII. You can probably ask him that, but he's a good guy. He believes in the cause. And he jumped into the GTII fight. So that happened on Friday, I guess, on Thursday. I forgot. Awesome. So the next question is GTII. All right. So there we go, guys. Uh, keep in mind, they have to close out positions. Be prepared. Have a game plan because we about to get paid. I would love for them to open up trading. Let this baby close out the way it should be. Uh, like I said, I'm not selling cheap. I want at least somewhere in a triple digit range and that's what we deserve because I believe they're getting off cheap in the triple digits. Just my personal opinion. I could be right or wrong, but I believe this baby could have hit, you know, possibly even four digits. It could have hit four digits. So we'll see what happens. This is pretty positive news. Uh, these next few weeks are going to be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, hope you all are excited for what's about to happen. I know I am. I'm happy. You know, I'm excited either way. Give me legit next bridge or give me my price. Hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash thumbs up, drop a comment down below. Consider subscribing to the channel and I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Peace.